Um, so, yeah, I'm here today to talk about our conservation partnerships um, with our rare species, what that's involved this year, and it has been a, a very exciting year, oops, this year, um, not only because of turning 40, but what I'm going to talk to you about today. So, firstly, I'm going to report on the success of the new Azure Hawker pools at Crowder Estate. You'll have heard quite a lot about Crowder Estate over the past few years. It's one of our um, main Azure Hawker partners. Um, uh, so, it's a really special place. It's part of Ranach Moor, um, and it's such a special place that even the local railway station has lots of information about the, the bog pools um, and the, the peat bogs that are there. And you may remember uh, me talking about this before, or have encountered it yourself, possibly. Um, so the majority of surveys that we've carried out over the past few years in the Highlands have found that the habitat of our rare bog pool species have been drying up really significantly, with um, very few surviving invertebrates. So to combat this, we've been working with Sarah Watts, who's the conservation officer at Crowd Estate, um, to come up with some new pool designs, so making pools with different sizes and depths and different shapes that we hope will hold the water in times of drought. And on meeting the contractor in February, you can see there's a bit of snow on the, the hills there. Um, we looked at the two areas where we plan to carry out this work and how the lie of the land could best be used to our advantage, um, sort of make it easier for the digger driver. Um, so one of the areas was quite close to the station. Um, I'm just wondering if you can see the station in the background. I think you can just see the station building here. Oh, was that working there? So you can just see that building there. So if anybody fancies going to Carrow or getting off the train at Carrow Station and going in and doing some Azure Hawker surveys, then um, it's not very far to walk. Um, and the other is about a mile away down the old track back towards Rannick Station, which I think is an old uh, drove road. And this is the drowned kitten sphagnum, sphagnum cuspidatum, that um, is found in the pools that Azure Hawker like to use. Um, as you can see, this is Pat on the right-hand side here, using the high-tech colander method of carrying out larval surveys. And Pat does deserve a special mention. Pat is an absolutely wonderful woman. She does so much work for the BDS, and she's a real ins inspiration to, to us in Scotland and throughout the whole of the UK, I think. And here's Sarah, um, and one of the pools being deepened. This took place in March. We created seven new or dammed pools at the station complex and eight new or dammed pools at the two complexes uh, at Lubna Clach, which is down the, down the track towards, back towards the station. And the, the digger driver, he was just absolutely amazing. He was really, really skilled. He was very gentle with the sphagnum. Took the sphagnum out of the pools, set it aside, um, did the work, put the sphagnum back in, um, and there was no exposed peat at all. And I, I could go on at great length about this, but there's a nice little video that, that I took at the time, um, which sort of captures our joy at how well it went on the day. So I'm going to play that, and hopefully that will play. <clears throat> there's no noise there because it was just so windy. So that's been removed, but... Um, we'll hear Pat and Sarah speaking quite soon. It's, yeah, it's a lack, the lack of rain when, when we're having the drought periods. There's so much peat drain work being done um, across Scotland now. It's just a fact being having to drain people. Oh. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
guy at CC and um, they're both very happy. So they're going to tell us why they're so happy. So do you want to, do you want to start off? Tell us who you are and what you can do with the first Yeah, so I'm Sarah Watts. I'm the It's always quite windy. My phone conked out, so it does end end rather abruptly. But you can uh, you can just see how happy we were with the results and and how windy it was on the day as well. Um, so um, Pat since has since carried out some more surveys of the new pools. She went back in May and she found um, nine larvae in six of the twelve new pools. And then a number of us returned um, in September for more surveys. And we were able to find, we had very positive results in September. So the um, deeper pools had retained uh, water when the shallow pools had dried up. So that was, that was excellent. 14 of the azure hawker larvae were found in 7 out of the 12 new pools. And the majority of them were, quite, were big larvae. They were over 29 millimetres, well-developed wing buds. So that means that they're going to emerge next May and June as, as adults. Um, so, and these are the most larvae that, large larvae that have been found anywhere recently. Most of them, as I said, were in the pools that had been deepened um, to enable water retention and where sphagnum had been put in. So there would have been larvae and eggs in that, in that sphagnum. However, two were in a new small pool where sphagnum hadn't been put in. And um, we think it's possible, we think it's probable that they've travelled overland from some shallower pools that were quite close by. They were only 10 to 20 metres away. So is that possible? We think that's possible that larvae can do that, but we don't have that evidence. So we need more research um, on that kind of thing. Um, so the results from this year's survey, uh, they are very promising and we pl plan to create more pools um, in future. So we'll be continuing to monitor their colonisation so that we can use that information for when we're um, advising other, other land managers. And I've got another, another couple of windy videos for you. Um, just about when Pat and I were measuring the, the, the larvae. So it's just a little bit of basic idea on how to tell the difference between common hawker and azure hawker larvae. Yeah. Do you feel cold? <laughs>
Uh, I will hear to dad that no animals were harmed in the making of those videos. <laughs> yes, we were all quite chilly by the end of it. Um, so here's, here's a lovely adult, um, agile hawker uh, larva, taken by our new area coordinator, Graham Rennie, um, sort of in the Northwest Highlands. And despite looking for these dragonflies for um, almost 10 years, I've still to get a good view of an adult azure hawker. So um, they, they can be very, very elusive dragonflies. So we have a new key site or priority site at Kinloch Woodlands. Um, so this is near Shieldig in the, the Northwest Highlands. And it's a SCIO, which is a, a Scottish charitable incorporated organisation. And it's sort of managed by the community for the community. And as you can see from the view on the right hand side there, it's definitely got one of the best views from any of our uh, key or priority sites in Scotland. Plus it has um, all these rare species. It has white-faced darter, northern emerald, azure hawker, uh, keeled skimmer. I saw my first keeled skimmer uh, here this summer, which was quite exciting. And um, these photos have been taken by uh, Graham, who's been doing a lot of work uh, there over the past few years. But it's a good-sized site. It's a thousand acres. Uh, it's it's brilliant, and it's next to um, Ben Shieldig, um, which is also a key site. It's owned by the Woodland Trust, and they have azure hawker. Uh, there, so having that sort of geographical continuity is, is, is really good. There's ancient Caledonian pine forest there, but the majority of it is the, the, the bog, the bog and, and peatland. They're putting in, or they're hoping to get new uh, woodlands. So they've done some fencing um, to allow natural regeneration to take place. Um, and they're also doing some tree planting as well with volunteers. <clears throat> So in June, I organised a day's training with um, Graham uh, as, as my assistant. So this was attended by the site managers, uh, conservation staff and volunteers from round about. And you can see we had an absolutely glorious day for it. So there's, lots, there's a number of bog pools on the site. This one on the left-hand side here, this is one of the best locations for white-faced darter. But like so many of the shallow pools, um, they are drying up. So... Um, I'll soon be working on a management plan to see how we can improve some of the pools uh, for dragonflies and prevent them from drying up. I think it's going to be possible to create peat buns or dams like we did at Karawa just to raise the water level. So that's, that's the way of causing sort of minimum damage but with maximum impact. And here's some more of Graham's lovely Azure Hawker pictures as um, you know, I do like to see. A, a picture of an adult hawker occasionally so you never get to see them myself. So Pat and I have been working with FLS this year. Tim was talking about our, our agreement um, that we signed last year. So we've been training their environmental teams in each area on rare dragonfly ID and advising on habitat management. The FLS sites are very important for dragonflies, as we can see from this uh, map here. Um, they own and manage over 50 sites, which have uh, rare species, including Glen Affric, which is one of the the top sites in the whole of the UK for uh, rare species. Uh, so there's a huge, huge potential for lots of positive work. So as I said, we focused on uh, training and habitat management advice this year. So I'm just going to show you a few pictures of uh, surveys and training with the staff. Um, this is Tony and Bill on the left-hand side here. They're based near Locker Bay and Dumfries and Galloway, so in the, the south, south team. So they've been doing an absolutely amazing job over probably the last 15 years. They've been putting in networks of ponds wherever they can. Um, and that's created wonderful new homes for dragonflies as well as lots of other wildlife as well. And we took the North team out to see northern damselfly habitat in the Cairngorms recently. So Stephen Corcoran, who's the area coordinator for the Cairngorms, um, he was there to assist. And there's great potential, again, for new northern damselfly ponds in FLS forests to sort of help the population expand further. Um, and we visited a few of the ponds that were put in as part of the northern damselfly 
Cairn Gorms project a few years ago that Tim mentioned that Andrea managed um, to look at best practice and best design for how they can put in their new ponds in coming years. And it was a similar picture for the East team. There had been a new Northern Damselfly site found at Fetteresso near Stonehaven. So that was quite a distance from the nearest populations in Deeside. Um, again, so there's a possibility of connecting these sites. So we have Northern Damselfly down, you'll recognise these areas, Tim, down at uh, sort of the curling pond at Ballater, which is one of the pictures you showed, the before and after. So we have them um, here on Dinnet uh, Nature Reserve. We have them up here. We have them here. Um, and the FLS forests basically come all the way down here to Fetteresso. So putting in these sort of stepping stone ponds throughout their forest to help connect uh, populations is um, it just it's going to create these, these um, habitat corridors that the dragonflies can move along. So it's quite exciting to think about what, what can be done because FLS, they have, they have the machinery um, and they have the, the staff to operate the machinery. So it's just getting that work into the, the management plans each year. <clears throat> So this is in the Galloway Hills, not far from Silver Flows, as the crow flies. And Silver Flows is where um, there, were, there was an azure hawker population up until about five years ago, um, and no, nothing's been seen there since. Um, and we thought that, it, it, we know it's a very elusive dragonfly, um, uh, but FLS have been working to re-wet Silver Flow. So if there, is, or it's, it's, if there is some dragonflies remaining, then hopefully with the habitat having been improved, uh, the population might grow again. But we, we, we just don't know. But this silver flow is just over the, that, hill, that hill there. So as, as the crow flies, it wasn't far. And this looks just perfect as your hawker habitat. And this site had never been surveyed before for dragonflies because it was at the top of a hill where there'd been lots of uh, forestry plantation. That had, just been that had just been felled. It was quite a, a hike to get up, up to the top there. We didn't find any azure hawker larvae, but we were only there for a couple of hours. Um, the, uh, there wasn't any sphagnum cuspidatum, so I think the chances are very, very, very slim, but um, hopefully the staff will keep, will keep looking. And this is the central team near Aberfoyle, where there are northern emerald sites, which sadly are sort of vegetating over. Um, so they do need some management. Unfortunately, the two sites aren't really... Um, digger accessible, so the staff are going to have some um, volunteering days to dig out sites themselves. And David McCulloch, who is, um, he, he carries out our transect at one of our hotspots near Stirling at Flanders Moss. He took this wonderful picture on the right, which was at Flanders, so that's a Northern Emerald. He did find a, a, an amazing new site in Aber, near Aberfoyle as well, so continuing that knowledge of the Northern Emerald sites. And Pat's been working with the, the team in the West. Um, she's been advising on, there's quite a few white-faced data sites that need quite a lot of work. Um, but again, Pat's just been absolutely wonderful. Uh, and she's been working with Scottish and Southern Energy. At, there's a new hydro scheme that's going in near Glengarry Glen at Corrie Glass. And again, she's been advising on peatland restoration for dragonflies um, and how to create the, the deeper pools where the rarer species are found. And then next year is going to be another exciting year. Um, so we're going to be carrying out more work with the Cairngorms National Park on Northern Dams of Fly Ponds, continuing to extend that habitat connectivity within the park, putting in new ponds, managing existing ponds. And also um, they're keen to work outside the park. So there's potential to include um, the ponds. So this is the, this is the Cairngorms here. So these are the three core populations along Straths Bay. Um, <clears throat> along nor northern Perthshire, and this is Deeside. So um, working with these sites as, as well, Western Aberdeenshire here, will be um, really, really useful. And this is a map of Stevens, uh, just showing that so the, the ponds where we have northern damselfly are in red, and suggestions of new pond locations are in blue to provide uh, connectivity to existing sites. And we used this in the Northern Damselfly project a few years ago as well. So it's just great to see those sort of networks just beginning to grow and expand. So in 2024, what more conservation work will we be doing? 
Uh, well, we've also put in a funding application to the Nature Restoration Fund with Nature Scott um, to carry out landscape scale conservation work for a project called Dragonflies on the Bog. So it's essentially doing similar work that we've been doing at Carower. We've put in for two main sort of geographical areas. Excuse my gesticulating, but one uh, covering the sort of Rannoch, Carower, Glencoe, up to Glen Nevis area, and the other area on sort of like west of uh, Loch Ness and down to Glengarry. So huge areas where we would hope to create better habitat for our rare bog pool species um, and all connecting as well. So we're just waiting to hear. Hopefully we'll um, hear back in time for Christmas. That would be a wonderful Christmas present. If they do say yes, we, we just don't know. So keep your fingers crossed. But um, thank you for listening and I hope you found that interesting.